everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I've got Gidget here with me today. She is all back from the doggy spa. Oh, can you say hi to the camera? Yes, she is so happy to be home. <laughs> oh, she's, she's not interested in, I think, looking. Oh, we have tried to roll over on our belly for scratches, so. Very happy to be home. She's super fluffy. I'm not sure what they did uh, when they groomed her before we picked up. It's like she had a Brazilian blowout or something. Or very fluffy fur. Anyway, welcome back to part two of the Huxley Bag Sew Along. Um, today, we are going to be putting together the lining, and that includes the, um, she calls it a technology pocket, although I don't have an iPad mini that I would be putting into this size. I think I could probably, in the bigger one, I might be able to get my, I don't know, my Surface Pro into, I'm not sure. Um, I may make the bigger one later, uh, but I'm doing, I'm doing the smaller size. I'm doing view A, which is the, the one that has the flap instead of the zipper on the top. Um, I just like the way that one looks, and this is the one I wanted to make. Um, so anyway, today we'll be doing the lining, putting the little snap and stuff with the um, pocket that's there, and then we are assembling the adjustable straps. So these are the backpack straps that get... Um, it's the convertible straps, so they can go from like backpack straps to around your bike, I think. Is that how that works? Or it can go crossbody. There's a, yeah, they're the, they have like little lobster clips on the end. But they, are in essence, are the backpack straps, um, which is probably how I'll be wearing it most of the time. So that's quite involved, and um, I've got some tips for you on how to sew through all of the um, bulk that you'll be sewing through, especially if you decide to cover your webbing with leather like I did. Um, I'm maybe regretting that a little bit. <laughs> Because I think using just the plain webbing would be just beautiful, but anyway, that's fine. Um, on another note, um, I have a lovely viewer, um, Hayden Silk is the name of her YouTube channel. She has fantastic tips on working with leather. So if you are making a bag out of leather, I would highly recommend, I'm going to put a link down to her channel below. She just has a lot of really great tips for working with leather um, on her channel. So I'm going to pop her information down below. All right, that's all I've got for today. We will see you next week with part three of our sew along. We'll get more into making some more of the straps and get into the body, I think get into the body of the bag next week. All right, I hope you have a wonderful end of your weekend. I will see you on Tuesday with the final three tops for my great module sew along. Um, then we're gonna dig into the bottoms. So uh, yeah, so that's what we've got kind of coming forward um, into the beginning of the week. I'm not sure what I'm doing Friday yet, so stay tuned. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys have a great end of your weekend, and I'll see you next week, or see you Tuesday. Bye. All right, guys, here we go. Time to start sewing our bag. Okay, so I want to talk about the machines real quick. I'm using my industrial machine to do most of the sewing, but I'm doing all of my top stitching on my um, home machine, and I actually moved it just right here next to me where my serger normally sits. Um, I have a regular needle in my industrial right now. This will switch to a leather needle here soon. Um, in my home sewing machine, I have a size 18 leather needle. Um, I've got that heavy nylon thread that I showed you um, in the top thread and then regular thread in the bobbin. Um, and I put a walking foot on my home machine. I find that sewing with leather, a walking foot is the way to go, not a Teflon foot. Now, for this machine, my industrial machine, I have a regular foot on there right now because we're going to sew the lining, which is just regular cotton, but when I go to leather, I will put a Teflon foot on this machine because I don't have a walking foot for this one. Okay, I am literally following Maddie's instructions word for word here, um, so this is going to be a lot less fly by the seat of my pants than some of the past ones. Okay, so to start, we're going to start with sewing up the lining, which is why I have a regular needle in here right now. Um, okay, we've got, I'm making view A. I have my little tag here that was left over from the skirt. I'm going to put this into my lining just because I think it's fun. Um, but you're going to want, let's see, one piece, let's see, two of A. Let's do this in alphabetical order here. You're going to want two of piece A, which is right here. So that is lining piece A there one of B, one of C, and then M and N. Those are two leather pieces, the little strappies I've got over here. And then I've got my, my tag. Okay, so that's what we're working with right now. It's a little different from view B, but again, I'm making view A. All right, so we are going to start actually with piece B, which is this long one here. I'm going...
trying to keep all of my, there's so many pieces for this, I'm trying to keep them all organized so I can make this bag again another time. Helps to turn on the machine. <laughs> okay, so we are going, this is view B, or this is, um, not view B, making view A. This is piece B. Speak clearly, Whitney. All right, so we've got piece B. It's this nice long piece. What it wants us to do is fold this in half along the notches with right sides together. And then we're gonna sew at a half inch seam allowance, starting and stopping at the circles. Okay, now if you recall, when I cut this out, I have my notches, which pretty much is just this, so you're just folding this in half long ways. And again, I did mark my circles, but my fabric is hard to see. Oh, I see them. Okay. All right, so you should have not some circles. So we are going to, um, okay, so around the, okay, stopping at the circles. Okay, so we're gonna start at the circle here where my um, left hand is, and then we're gonna go down and down and then we're gonna leave the bottom open and we're gonna do the same on the other side. We're gonna sew up, turn the corner and stop at the circle. I'm going to mark those circles real quick with pens just so I don't get confused. Um, also, seam allowances are half inch. So that's obviously an important thing to take note. So I'm just going to mark my And again, this spattery lining, while super cute, makes it hard to see my dots that I made. Okay, so half of an inch, we're gonna sew, again, down, turn the corner, stop at the pin, and then same for the other side. So let's do that real quick. Also, I'm using a regular stitch length right now for the lining. On my home machine that I have set up for top stitching, I have that set at a 3.5. All right, so there we've got it. Now we are supposed to trim our corners and, um, turn my iron on, trim our corners. So I'm just gonna cut diagonally carefully here at the bottom, but just gonna cut the bulk out of those corners. Okay, now we're going to turn this right side out. I think this is part of the technology pocket that's in the, if I'm not mistaken. So we're gonna turn it right side out and you're gonna have a big gap here at the top. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the iron and I'm just going to, play, to um, iron this flat. Careful not to erase the, um, it's kind of hard to see here, but I do have a, um, box drawn that we're going to need for strap placement later. So I'm going to try not to erase that because this is that Frixon erasable pen. But make sure you poke your corners out because you want those nice and crisp. But we're going to do this real quick. Um, before I press this though, we're supposed to do the same thing for pocket C. So this is also, I think, these are just the pockets that are on the inside. So, okay. So this is piece C. We're gonna do the same thing while I'm waiting for my iron to heat up. So I'm gonna set this one aside. So we are folding it at the notches, right sides together. And we're gonna start and stop at the markings, which I can bar barely see. So I'm gonna do that. Turn 
turn this right side out. So basically, <clears throat> these are internal pocket pieces. So what we are, um, which is what I'm gathering. Again, I've not made this. This is my first time. I like to take you guys along. Nice and raw footage. So what we're going to do is we're going to press both of these flat and make sure you tuck that seam allowance at the top, which is the opening. Press that down because we are going to top stitch along um, the top to close that up on both pieces. So I'm just going to take these over to the iron real quick and press those flat. Okay, so once these two are pressed nice and flat, again be careful if you've marked your um, this rectangle or the square up here with Frixon pin like I have. Um, but we're just going to top stitch right along this top edge that has the opening to close that up. that you could also do that you could slip stitch that shut if you wanted a cleaner finish but since it's the lining I'm not as picky but you could definitely close that with a slip stitch and it would be fine okay so we've got those done Okay, so we already get to sew some leather and we get to get the tools out already. This is very exciting. So this is gonna be part of the um, technology pocket closure. Um, I'm gonna put this, since these are the pockets, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this tag on just cause I think it's funny. Okay, I'm gonna sew this on to my pocket just real quick because now that this is one piece. Okay. Just think that's kind of a fun homage to the skirt that is now becoming a bag. Okay, so now we get to take piece M, which is this little bitty piece here and it gets folded so we've got this is the bigger um, pocket piece and you should have marked your um, uh, square there so I'm going to take my I've marked all of my pieces with uh, painters tape so that I don't get confused because <laughs> they're just a whole bunch of rectangles all right so basically this just gets folded around this piece like so, and then top stitch down. So basically you're just gonna top stitch from the top down, you know, across the bottom and up the top, which actually, that's not even necessary. Okay, I'm looking at the picture. You can just top stitch down both sides because we're actually going to install one of the, uh, the female side of a snap in the middle here. So, you know, since this is leather, it's not going to um, ravel. But what I think I'm gonna do, because this is such a small piece and you can't press leather, is I think I'm gonna do some um, Wonder Under, just some double stick tape, just to stick down on either side the, um, the bottom part here that we're not gonna top stitch, just to keep that all in place. So let me pull some of that out. And this is just by Dritz. It's just the, you know, the, the double stick tape. It's like a quarter inch wide. Um, you can get it pretty much anywhere. Mine got all messed up though, and it is sticking to the wrong piece of paper. So I always have to... So the sticky part is on the outside of the roll instead of on the inside of the roll. Something got messed up there, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little piece of this. and stick it to the back of the leather. Oh, 
on both the short ends of this little piece. Okay, so I've stuck the, the double stick tape, make sure it's stuck there. I'm gonna leave that out, we may need that again. All right, and then you peel the paper off the back. And I'm just going to stick this, again, I've got the, um, let me move that pocket piece out of the way. I've got the little box that's marked here. So I'm going to stick that there. Then I'm going to flip it over, peel it off here, and then do that. All right, so now it's stuck in place. So now I'm gonna go to the top stitch, um, the machine that I've set up for top stitch. Although, I mean, if you wanted to, you could just, it's a pain, but you can just switch your, if you have just one machine like a normal person, you could definitely just um, switch out um, for your top stitching and you could sew your lining with a leather needle, it'll just use, use a bigger hole. Okay, so I'm gonna go and top stitch either side and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there we go. It's all top stitched down. I do wanna make a note, I did take my um, top stitching, because my top stitching thread is so thick, and because the brown leather is kinda of thick. The red leather is not as thick, but the brown is a little bit. Um, so I have increased my stitch length on the top stitching to a 4.0 from a 3.5. So I just wanted to make that note. Okay, we are going to go make a hole and then install a snap before we go any further. Okay, this is the fun part. This is my favorite part of bag making. All right, so we should have our little tool here that has like the little um, knobby thing on the end, the lack of a better word. This is our snap setting tool. And again, I'm using the um, hardware kit that Goheen Design sells for this bag. So this is all from that kit. These are the pieces you're gonna want for your snaps. Now we're just installing the female part, which is, at the risk of sounding crass, the one that goes um, inward. And then this is the male piece, so they fit together like so. So, that, sorry, that is really hard to see on my dark colored sweater. Okay, so that's, yeah. So those, you'll need those two. Those are the actual snap pieces that go together. And then you will have one cap piece that goes to the female side and one that's, that's like this that kind of has, um, it's like a post. That goes with the male side. So if you can kind of see those. So we're just installing the female side onto this. All right, then you're going to need your leather punch. Now, I had to play around with this a little bit. If you unscrew, loosen this screw right here, this little black piece goes and kind of keeps things locked, unscrew it just a little bit, and that allows um, you to move the size you want. I've gone with the 1 8 inch, which is a uh, 3.1 millimeter, I think. Yeah, which is 3.1 millimeter, so it's the third smallest. So here's the teeny tiny one, and then the second smallest, and then here's that. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. So basically, you can mark your hole if you want to. I'm going to kind of eyeball it just right into the center, not totally, the center widthwise. I'm gonna go the center widthwise, and then I'm gonna go a little bit towards the bottom, but not too close to the bottom. So just kind of, I think, eyeball it for the most part on where you kind of want that to go. Pretty much in the center, maybe just a hair long. And once you've decided, can you see what I'm doing? Let me move closer. I have a problem of going out of frame. I apologize. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to, this is the first time I've used this tool. We're gonna to figure this out together. Okay, pick there. And then you squeeze until you hear a click. Oh wait, didn't go all the way through. And I wonder, This is really thick leather. I'm gonna go at it from the other side because I can see the indent. There we go. Okay, that's really cool. That makes it super easy. <laughs> 
Okay, so once you have your hole into your leather, we're going to take the um, cap part and it's gonna go onto the back part of your leather. So this is the back side because I put my tag on the front. So, sorry, out of frame again. So this is the back side. So it's gonna, the back side's gonna have the cap. And then on the front, you've got the, the cap is coming. I wish, I really gotta figure out how to get above myself to film. Um, you may have some like, you know, stray threads or pieces of leather or whatever from that. But then, okay, so I've got that poking through and now my female part is gonna go on top, like so. I have an acrylic board here. This is my um, wooden um, pressing table, which would be fine to hammer on, but my brother-in-law gave me this acrylic board, so we're just gonna use that. And then it's just a matter of taking this tool and you've got this little nub thing here at the top and it sets right into that um, hole of the back of that cap and then you're just gonna hammer. And there we go. Sorry, that was probably really loud. So there we have, I don't have my lights over here. So there we have our female piece and it's installed on the right side of the fabric on our little um, piece of leather there. Okay, and I have a feeling the strap is gonna have the male part on it. So I'm gonna leave all this stuff here and let's go uh, do some more sewing before um, get a little bit more done. All right, I wanna show you just a little more up close of what that looks like. So there we go. So there's our little um, leather tab, and here is the female piece on the right side, and then on the back you've got the snap cap. I have thicker leather, so depending on how thick, I really had to hammer that in to get that on, but we're good. Okay, so let's go to our next step. Okay, now we're just attaching, sorry, I was reading instructions. <laughs> now we're just going to attach our pockets to our um, piece A. So we have two pieces of piece A. And again, I'm going to have to really look to see my, oh, I see them. And you're going to have the um, small pocket on one side. I don't think it matters. The small pocket on one side, I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. That's the strap. The small pocket on one side and then the bigger pocket on the other. So, I think you're just gonna kinda pick. So again, I'm going to have to look really hard to find my pocket markings. Doop -doop -doop. I tell you, I did not, maybe, there's so many colors on this, I just didn't pick a very good color for my pen marking. Okay, when in doubt, pull the pattern out. All right, so <laughs> there's two on this pattern piece. There's a marking for the larger pocket and then one for the smaller pocket. So depending on which side, you know, you can kind of follow that a little bit. So we're just gonna go here and that puts that marking Now this is just gonna be like if you were sewing a patch pocket onto anything. So we're just gonna line this up, the pocket onto the right side of the lining. Line up my four corners. And then I'm just going to pin it in place. And again, just like if I were doing um, a pocket on a shirt or a skirt or a pair of pants, a patch pocket, I'm gonna do the little triangle at the top. So I'm basically going to, um, I'm basically going to start sewing, this is kind of hard to see. I'm gonna start sewing like right here. I'm gonna sew diagonally across the top and then I will start sewing down um, the sides of the pocket all the way up, I'll come back up to the top, then I'll go across the top, just like two or three stitches, and then go diagonally back to the side. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And 
It also makes a nice line since you top stitch the top of this pocket before attaching this little guy. Um, it makes a, a nice line. to make note that the sides of the lining do go out towards the bottom so you're gonna you're not gonna have an equal distance to the cut side of the pocket you will at the bottom and at the top but not at the sides quick so that is top stitched on and you can see hopefully the little triangle that's there at the top that just helps reinforce the top of the pocket since you'll be pulling things in and out of there um, but that's what that's for okay now on the other piece of side a did I mark these any better <laughs> I, feel, I don't know if I gave up what happened there Now I'm going to sew this in the same manner. So I'm going to do the same little triangles. Okay. So now we have both sides of our lining done with their pockets. All right, next step is, all right, sorry, I'm like reading the instructions as we go here. All right, now for piece N, which is this piece here, you have a fold line right in the center. So we're gonna fold it wrong sides together and we're going to top stitch down um, either side. We don't need to do the bottom because it is, um, on the fold and then the top's going to get basted to the top of the um, piece of lining so that then we're going to put a snap on this one so then that snaps closed to keep things inside okay so that's where we're headed with this so I'm just going to go to my other machine and I'm going to top stitch down both sides and again this is folded in on itself wrong sides together um, and then the cut edge is going to get put into the seam so here we go Okay, so here we have the strap. It's been sewn. Um, you've got the rod here at the top and then the folded edge is here. So I'm gonna just take this piece now and line up the fold with the fold and mark um, where I wanna put my snap. So we will go over and install the male side to this piece. All right, so again, we've got our piece that is <laughs> out of frame, sorry. <laughs> that is sewn and I have marked the spot where I want to put the mail right there. Hopefully you can see that. Again, sorry about the lighting. I, I just can't move my lights back and forth easily. So we're going to do the same thing. Now, this is the right side of my strap because I have red top stitching thread on the wrong side or not top stitching um, for the, in the bobbin because uh, I will be using red thread later. So I want to make sure that to note that this is the top. Honestly, thinking back, I probably should have put the cap on this piece because that's going to be the piece that shows, but, you know, hindsight. Again, I'm doing this right along with you. So, again, we're going to take our tool here and do it right through the leather. Again, this is super thick leather, so... There we go. Just needed a little coaxing. So again, this is the right side. So I want 
my male piece to actually be on the wrong side because it will get, you just wanna make sure, think about it, how it's going to snap over the other piece. So again, that's why I kinda wished I used the prettier cap because now the Tandy thing's gonna show, but that's okay. I'm using um, the same size that I used for the female side. Actually. Okay, so you want your male side to be up. It says um, on these, it says Tandy on it. That's how you kind of know, but it's the, you know, oops, side with the top. And we're gonna put it over that. And again, grab our little tool that goes into that hole. And we're gonna hammer the bejesus out of it. And that's set, so we are good to go. So again, I put the male side on the wrong side of the strap. So this will be the side that shows. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I just wish I'd use the cap. It doesn't really matter if which piece you use, um, the cap or this piece for um, the wrong or right, or for the male or female. And in all honesty, you could have put the female on this side and then the male on the other side, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. But there we go. You just want to make sure that when things close, because ask me how I know on that one, that the snap is that they're on opposite sides so that they will actually connect. So there we go. Now that little strap is finished, and now we're going to base that onto our lining. Okay. So now we're going to attach our strap. So we're working on the piece that's got your technology pocket that's got already got this little guy. I'm, all right, so now I'm going to take this tab and I'm going to snap it into the female part just because I want everything to lay nice and flat. Um, and actually where I ended up putting the rivet, this extends past the top of the pocket, which is fine. Um, so I'm glad that I tested that. You should also have a couple of notches here at the top of the pocket that kind of show you where that strap should be, just to, you know, because it kind of moves around on you. Um, so I am actually just going to base that in place. I'm going to use my other machine because it's got a leather needle in it, um, but I'm going to just base this in place across the top of the pocket because um, then we're going to finish sewing our lining together. So I'm just going to base that real quick. I'll come right back. And you can see what I mean. Like I wish I'd put the cap on that side because you can just see where it says Tandy. It's just not the pretty side of the snap. The pretty side of the snap is in there, <laughs> but that's okay. It's inside the bag. Okay. So there we have our um, tab all basted into place and I trimmed off the top so that it's flush with the top of the pocket. All right, now we're gonna sew our two pieces together. So we're gonna put them right sides together and at a half inch, we are going to sew from the top to the bottom. Keep my computer awake here. We're gonna sew from the top to the bottom all the way to the end, and then we're gonna sew across the bottom of the bag. We're gonna leave this little cutout square piece completely open. Then we're gonna sew across the bottom of the bag, and then we're gonna sew this side um, here up at a half of an inch seam allowance. So we're sewing three sides of the bag separately, and we're leaving that whole cutout completely open. And I will show you why in a second. Okay, now we're gonna make a little gusseted corner here. So basically what you're gonna wanna do, you can go to your machine and actually, or your iron, and actually it's probably not a bad idea, and press all your seams open. I'm gonna do that real quick. So press all three of these separate seams open, and then I'll come back and show you how we're going to sew these corners. Okay, now this is actually really pretty simple. So you've got your cutout corners here. What we're gonna do, um, so these are, you know, right sides together right now, the way we've sewn them, we've pressed our seam allowances open, but now we're gonna open this up and we're gonna match our pressed open seam allowances of both the side and the bottom. We're just working on one side right now. This pocket's wanting to weigh it down. There we go. So it's gonna look like this. So we have our seam allowances are matched. You can definitely pin that in place. And now we're just gonna sew across this bottom at a half of an inch. So see, when it's all done, you can see the side that we've done, it squares off that corner like so. 
So we haven't done this side yet, but that see how it, it squares off that corner. So again, we're still right sides together. So this is how it was sewn with, you know, the square. But now we're going to open that up, take the, you know, start at the inside, the little square here, and pull it apart like so. And now you're going to match your pressed open seam allowances together. You can definitely pin and then sew at a half inch seam allowance across that seam. Like that. So now it's inside out, but you can see it squares off the bottom of your lining. Isn't that smart? We'll do the same thing on the outside bag. But now I think we've got our lining constructed. Yes, our lining is good to go. All right, let's skip ahead. Okay, so our lining is done. We can set this aside. It's very exciting. Okay, so I have, uh, the next step is we're going to be working with strap B right here. Um, we have one cut in leather, and then you also have your woven strap. Now, I have sewn some of this off camera just because I was mostly playing around with thickness and wanted to know, because um, one of the options is to not cover it with leather, um, any of the straps with leather, and just use the webbing. So I was kind of playing around with my machine, and I think I have... I think that by hammering, I've taken my hammer. Isn't this lovely? This is a little brass-headed hammer my brother-in-law got me, but I would actually probably use a mallet if I didn't have this. But I've just been hammering where we fold it. So basically, I've taken the leather. I just hit my hammer thumb with the hammer. I took the leather, and I've top-stitched it in place on top of the webbing. And then I went ahead, and I put this on top... And I marked two of the, the, or four of the rivet holes right here and went ahead and punched those with my um, rivet guy. And this one is the second smallest setting that I used for the rivet. I was using the, th the third one. So let's see. I used the 332nd inch size or the 2.3 millimeter size and um, I already pushed the rivets through and they seem to fit fine so I think that's probably the right size. Um, I'm going to have to, to eventually poke the corresponding on the other side. I just thought it was going to be too thick to try and go through the leather, the webbing, and then again the leather and the webbing in one fell swoop. So I thought what I would do is get this all figured out, hammered in place, and then mark the back so I can poke those holes um, for the rivets so it can go through all layers. We also are going to have to top stitch um, here. And if you look at your pattern piece, it will tell you we're going to top stitch right here. Uh, these get folded like so. There's the fold line. There's the fold line. Um, and her illustrations, too, and the instructions are pretty good. So basically what's going to happen is we've got two of our rings and they're going to slide on here. This is going to get folded. This is going to get folded. So it's like so. We're going to top stitch right in front of those rivets going across. So we've already top stitched each side down, um, but we're going to top stitch to keep it folded basically. Now I'm thinking I'm going to have some F, like leftover excess here, and what I'm probably going to do after I've top stitched is trim it, not super close, but do I am going to trim it, and because this is a synthetic cotton, I'm probably going to um, hit it with some fire to keep it from raveling, just to singe the end and keep it from um, catching fire. So anyway, that is where we're going with this strap. So first things first. Again, I have measured, it's supposed to be six inches from the middle of one ring all the way to the middle of the second. I found that spot and now I have hammered my leather to try and make it as flat as possible so that it will go through my machine so I can top stitch all those layers because that's a lot of bulk. And again, I'm sewing on my home machine. So um, 
that is the game plan. But before I do anything, I'm actually going to take... Okay, I'm actually going to take an awl. And I'm going to go through and just mark the um, back side of where these rivets need to go for... Um, the other side because the rivets will go through all the layers. But I think that should be enough maybe or maybe not. Oh, or I can go all the way through it. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to mark the leather and I can just barely see my holes there. So I'm just gonna take my tool. Okay, so now I've got the holes. Can you see that? Now I've, oh, sorry, I feel like I'm making it dark. Now I've got the holes on both there and then here. Um, so when we wrap it around the hole, they should line up. Also, I wanna show you the rivets. So the rivet bottoms look like that, like the little, like that. And then the little rivet tops are just these little bitty caps. And then this flat, it looks like just a <laughs> flat cylinder here is the tool that we're going to use for putting those in. Okay, so I'm going to do this on the other side, mark my holes, and then punch my holes, and then we're going to go over to the machine, top stitch, and then we will set our rivets. All right, so there we go. I really hope that's not too dark. Um... Okay, so you can see I've top stitched right there and there's our rivet holes. Okay, so next, my battery's getting ready to die. Next we're going to set our rivets and then I have trimmed my leather here. I'm going to actually peel this back and just hit this with a lighter, this cut edge to, get, to seal that because this is a cotton look, it's actually synthetic. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and set our rivets and then this piece will be done. Okay, so I went ahead and put some rivets in. I was kind of using this piece as like a um, trial, and I did quite a bit of this one off camera. I will do all the rest on camera, um, just because I was still figuring things out. And as you can see, hopefully, on this rivet, um, so this is the tool that we put the rivet in. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Um, but there's like um, a textured end of this tool and then a smooth end. The textured end is the one you wanna put over the rivet because it has just a little bit of a indentation there at the bottom where the other side is flat and I totally used the wrong end and totally bent the living daylights out of the top of my rivet. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to leave it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but I also went back and I trimmed my leather straps and then I pulled this back and just hit this with a lighter to seal off any of those, um, that cut edge. And again, that's on the back. We're not going to see that. So, for the rivets. Now, again, I had already pre-done um, my holes for my rivets on both the top side and the back side. And once I had these top stitched and lined up, I went back with my tool again and just pressed through just to get any, especially the webbing. I was noticing the webbing was holding on in places. So that just to kind of cut the, the webbing a little bit more and that seemed to work great. So we're just gonna stick the post piece of the rivet through both holes and I've got it poking out here. And then we just take the cap, which is this little piece right there, and it gets pushed down. And then we wanna use the correct end of our tool and then hammer. Mine are a little, I totally boogered that one, this one up, so they are touching. 
Um, I'm not too worried about it, but there we go. Okay, now we are going to attach our backpack straps to this piece. I'm actually going to take you over to the machine. Um, I think this is going to be the last that we do for today on this back. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> this is loud. This is going to be the last that we do on the backpack for today, and then we'll pick it back up again next week. Um, but I'm going to take you over to the machine and show you some tips um, for sewing, for top stitching the leather, because this gets really thick, especially, um, again, my red leather is not nearly as thick as this brown leather, but uh, it does, you know, the webbing is, is thick in and of itself. Again, hammering it really helps with sewing, um, just like if you were doing with denim, but I'm going to show you kind of some tips for sewing through all of this thickness um, on my home machine. So you can see, since, I mean, pretty much everyone has the home machine, but not an industrial machine. So let's go over and do that. All right, so I've got you here at the home machine. Now, for this next step, we're going to be attaching the really long straps, which are strap W, piece W. Um, so I've got my webbing here. I've got my leather, my leather strips here. Um, I'm hoping you guys can see I'm having a hard time with my lighting. Um, and then I've got the slider, um, two of the slider pieces that look like this. And then I've got two of the lobster clip pieces that look like this. And then we will need the piece that we just made here, because this is all going to get attached together. I'm setting this aside, though, for right now. Okay, so first things first, we need to um, attach this piece, these sliders, to our webbing. So we're not even touching the leather at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap one end of this webbing and it's going to go up. Okay, let me try and show you. It's going to go through the back, up, and then it's going to go around that little piece so the end cut in is going to go back to the back, like so. And then she says to have about an inch and a half on the back side. So we're going to just fold it over on itself. So there's the front and there's the back, about an inch and a half. And then we are just going to um, top stitch this down. This is going to get covered up when we put the leather on, but we're going to just top stitch this down um, in place really quick. Um, again, I'm setting my, this is so thick, I'm setting my machine at a 4.0 stitch length because, um, because it's so thick. You could hammer this if you want. Um, I think I'm going to be okay for right now. Um, I'll probably have to get the hammer out at some point, but I'm just going to top stitch this piece right here down really quickly. And I've got my leather needle in and that's fine. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other strap. So that's what we've got. So we've got it just top stitched right there. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like on the back. Again, I have red thread in my bobbin. <laughs> I'm just going with it. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we are starting at the back, going through. And we're going over the little bar so that it looks like that. And then about an inch and a half, we're going to fold it back like so and top stitch that in place. Okay, now before I go any further, I want to keep this cut edge from um, getting all ravelly like it's doing at the moment. So I'm just going to, here I am with my fire again. I'm just going to fold this back so that this kind of sticks up. And I'm just going to take a flame and just dust it over the top. And you'll be able to see it kind of melting away a little bit. And that's going to keep it from, um, it doesn't look burnt or anything. It just kind of seals it off. 
and that's gonna keep it from raveling later. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. There you go. Now those are sealed. Oops, lost one. All right, now we are going to sew our leather to our strap. So this is what I have found helpful with sewing leather. I like to use the double stick wonder tape. I think that that works. You could use wonder clips if you wanted to, um, but I really like just the ease of this. So basically you're going to start this leather. So we've got our top stitch line here. We're gonna start it right above that line. So when we're top stitching, in theory, we'll be sewing over that same stitch line. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see the back. But yeah, you just want it, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch, if even that, above that stitch line that you just did. So this will be just regular naked webbing. And then at the end, your leather should be longer than your strap. So at the other end, you should have a little hangover of leather past your strap. What I'm gonna do is just take the double stick tape and just stick my leather to the top of to the top of my webbing and we're going to top stitch it in place around um, I think all sides except for the bottom. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do the bottom because I think it gets are we? Hmm. Yeah, I think it gets finished off later. Okay, so I'm just going to um, really quickly, off camera, stick this to my um, webbing with some of the double stick wonder tape just so it doesn't move around on me and then we'll come back and I will give you some tips on top stitching this to the webbing. Alright, so I've got this all nice and glued down basically. This wonder tape is fantastic. I don't find that it gunks anything up. Um, it's just really great. Alright, so on this piece I have about this much of leather that extends along past. That's fine. I am, oh about a quarter of an inch is what I am top stitching. So I'm just going to top stitch. Now, my big tips so far with working on this bag are, um, number one, if you get to a super thick place, just use your hand wheel. When I was top stitching ooh, right on um, these spots right here, um, where I was going through two layers of leather and two layers of this webbing, I just, I literally did the hand wheel almost the whole way. Um, that's okay. <laughs> Your machine will thank you for that. Uh, also, don't start at the very end of something so that your machine can have something to grip onto. If that means back stitching, you know, starting in the middle and then back stitching to the end and then coming back, um, sometimes that's what you need to do. So again, I'm doing about a quarter of an inch. I'm not going to back stitch here at the end. I'm just going to sew all the way around my strap and leather piece. Again, I have a walking foot on. I have a size 18 leather needle, um, heavy thread in the top, and then just regular thread in the bobbin. Again, just go slow. Okay, once you've got everything all stitched on, and I'd like to remind you too, you don't have to cover your straps with um, leather. You could totally just leave them the webbing, and I think that would be actually a really nice finish as well, because this webbing comes in a million different colors. Um, anyway, so if that's something, you know, you wouldn't have to do the top stitching, and it would be easier on your machine as well, just as an FYI. Okay, now we're gonna put the lobster clip, which is this, I mean, the, it would be the same, just you just wouldn't be top stitching leather. Anyway, <laughs> okay, we're gonna slide this on the unfinished edge all the way up here to the top and you wanna make sure 
that the um, lobster clip is on the side with the leather or the right side, whatever that is. Then, okay, now we're going to take, I'm going to try and scoot you back here. <laughs> okay, so here's my strap. So now, this is the wrong side. We're going to take, because we're making this adjustable. So now we're going to take this and it is going to go, I'm going to make sure I do this right. Okay, I'm going to go this way. Okay, so our lobster clip's on there. We've slid it on. Here is this. So now we're going to take this and it's going to go up through the back and then it gets tucked. This is where it's going to get a little heavy. It gets tucked back down so you've got a lot of bulk going through the front part of this. Like so. So now we basically want to just pull your lobster clip to the end and then we've got this you know hanging on. So basically you just made this an adjustable strap. Now this unfinished end here can actually work a little bit more of it down. This unfinished end of the strap here is going to act just like we did on this guy. So we are going to just go on the other side. It's going to go through here and then wrap around to the back like so and we're going to top stitch it in place and then we're going to do two rivets just like just like we did um, on this piece and the rivets are going to go on this side of the top stitching so we'll do a line of stitching so what I'm going to do first is kind of determine about that I don't know about an inch and a half I've got on the back folded over so I'm going to kind of press that into a crease then I'm going to take this off and I'm just going to hammer the living daylights out of this whole area here and then decide where I want to put my um, rivets and then I'm going to do the same thing. So we're going to go over now to the um, back to the cutting board or the not cutting the pressing table <laughs> and um, we're going to install the rivets and stuff there. Actually, no, I want to show you how I top stitch all of this stuff. So let me just go hammer this really, really well and um, mark my rivets and go ahead and um, punch those holes real quick. So I will be right back. I want to show you how I top stitch and then we'll go back over to the um, pressing board and I'll, we'll insert the rivets together. Okay, so I have punched my holes both on that side and on that side. I did them separately. Sorry, out of focus and I've hammered the living daylights, not just out of the crease here, but out of the entire piece. And I did that before I punched the holes. Now we don't want to forget to put this on <laughs> because that's the whole purpose. So again, we just want to slide that loop so that we've got like that. We want the rivets all on the same side. Don't accidentally put it on backwards. So there's the right side and there will be the back side. So now I'm just going to top stitch um, oh, I don't know, about a quarter, three-eighths of an inch inside on this side of my, um, on the slider side of my, um, I'm actually going to do this too. Remember, this is adjustable, so you can move this belt out of the way a little bit more to make sure you can get your presser fit in there. But yeah, about three-eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch, somewhere around there, um, I'm going to top stitch. And I'm going to start almost in the middle back stitch and then go forward and then back stitch a little bit. I have found that it just grips a little bit better and I'm going to use my hand wheel quite a bit on this because you've got a lot of bulk in this area. So I have to really get that up there. All right, so I'm going to actually very slowly backstitch. So I've started in the middle. I'm going to backstitch. Oh, my bobbin thread's wanting to run out. And 
and then go forward. I have found starting in the middle is so much better for the machine. Okay, my machine doesn't wanna. Okay, so there you go. We're just going slow. Use the hand wheel. I need to change out my bobbin thread. All right, so now on the back here, we've got extra. I'm going to um, trim off, trim off the extra leather. And then I'm gonna hit this edge once again with my lighter. Now the reason that flamed up is because there is cotton on the center in the core of this. Um, yeah, so make sure you don't set your house on fire. All right, so that side is done, except for obviously the rivets. So now we're gonna go um, do the rivets because we're gonna attach the other strap to the other side of this. So it's just the same thing. You're just doing it on the other side. So let's go over and do the rivets and then um, we will be done for the day. I'll show you what the whole piece looks like and then we'll be done for today. All right, so again, we look like this so far. It's our adjustable strap. And again, you can, this is adjustable, so you can move that somewhat easily up and down. You know, the leather does make it bulky. And then we've got this piece. So I'm just gonna show you how to do the rivets. So again, I have already punched, I'm hoping you can see that, the holes on both sides. So I've been taking an awl and just kind of going through um, both pieces, you can see just to make sure, especially the nylon from that webbing, it just likes to get really caught up. And then you're going to take your um, little post here, go through the back. Oh good, and that's going through really easily, so that's good. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put both in. Okay, so I've got both of my little posts through the back. And then we're gonna put our little caps on. I'm much more pleased with how those are gonna go on than I was the other one. But again, I'm not a perfectionist. And again, we're gonna use this tool. We want the, the um, textured side down because it's got a little place for the rivet to kind of sit so you don't booger it up. And then we're hammering. And then we're gonna do the other side. Oops. Well, you need to get that on there. I totally crushed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's gonna look nice and rustic, well-worn. Okay, so I'm just gonna really quickly do the same treatment to the other side of this piece, and then I'll come back and show you what we got um, and what you should have done by the end of today. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got, this is strap W. We've got our little lobster clip on the end, our slider. I'll show you the back here in a second, and then it's attached with rivets and top stitching to the circle that's attached to this piece, <laughs> that's then attached to the other strap with the other lobster clip. And then on the back, you've got everything that has been folded over. I sealed all of my cut ends um, with the lighter. And yeah, so that's the back side. Okay, so we should have this and then our lining, which I will turn right side out, which has our little technology pocket there that has the closure, and then our other pocket on the other side. So that's what we should have for this week, and I will see you guys next week, and we will continue sewing. This is going to be so exciting. I'm so excited to see this finished. Mm -hmm.